Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victor broadcast. Father, we thank you today. We give you praise and honor. We thank you, sir, for your word. We thank you for the power of God in our lives. We open our hearts. We open our minds for revelation of Jesus. And we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory for everything that's done and everything that's said. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you join Gloria and me in welcoming Dr. Caroline Leaf to this broadcast again today? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Do you realize what a real privilege it is to sit here with such two beautiful yes. young women? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Brother Copeland, how do you live with somebody that anointed? And I said, very carefully. That's a good answer. Yeah, We're talking about this. We're actually, um, Caroline's talking from her book, Think, Learn, and Succeed, Understanding and Using Your Mind to Thrive at School, the Workplace, and Life. Where were you 60 years ago when I needed you, girl? <laughs> when I was the dumbest kid in the class. I, I, really, I really needed this. No, oh. you weren't the dumbest. You just were the most disinterested. Oh, thank you, Gloria. <laughs> that, <laughs> hey, that's so nice. Yeah, it's that's true, too. It's true. It's really not true. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I was disinterested and dumb both, I think. Praise the Lord. <laughs> let's, let's look at our, our golden text for this week. In um, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. I like to read it like this. God has not given us the spirit of fear. We know that's the devil. He is the spirit of fear. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting. He is the fear, spirit of fear, and he's also the spirit of death. Mm-hmm. So fear and death run hand in hand. Mm-hmm. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, mm-hmm. and the spirit of a sound oh, man, like God. mind. Amen. A worry-filled mind is not a sound mind. An unforgiving mind is not a sound mind. It's a sick mind. That's the two um, illustrations over here. That that mess on the right, full of death. I was looking for somebody. (laughs) (laughs) You mess up my thinking, girl. (laughs) That was so funny. But a, a love-filled mind, <laughs> oh, glory to God. I, uh, Gloria Jean Copeland taught me how to love. It's beautiful. And all these years, we, we'll be married 57 years in April. It's incredible. And uh, we've, never, we've, we've never had any kind of an argument. I did. I argued. But she never would argue back. So That's it, good. That's good really, advice. Really, she, she mm. just wouldn't do it. Incredible. And so, uh, and then at six months after we got married, both of us accepted the Lord Jesus, were born again. And, of course, our lives then totally changed. But even all through all of those years, we've lived without argument. We've lived without, without a, a, a household of strife. And I think about all of the the bad things we missed. I mean, there are all kinds of terrible um, household situations that we just passed by because of a loving wife. Praise God. And I I, I, I just can't express it enough. And and I'm in good health today because of it. Yeah, definitely. So, amen. You've been very loving and kind and dear and generous. Well, I'm, I'm really I've working I've never asked anyway. Kenneth for anything in the financial realm or any other that he turned me down. Now, that's the kind of guy y'all want to have. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> amen. 
Amen. All right, praise God. Let's get back into this, Caroline. Yes, I'm all ears. <laughs> all ready to, to dive in. We were talking yesterday about, the, I said the question that I, overarching question that I ask people is, what does love look like? And to make that practical, if we have this power, love, and sound mind, we're in a world today that's defining mental health as this huge, big, scary phenomenon that we that is on the rise and all these statistics out there. And so it's a fear-mongering. It's creating tremendous fear amongst people and it's increasing chaotic thinking. And one of the things I mentioned yesterday was that people are dying 15 to 25 years younger from the mismanagement of mind. And when you bring a spirit of fear into a into a global community, you start also creating chaos in the mind and you start creating the, the potential for early death and etc. So what I want to try and do is help people understand what love looks like and how can you make sure you're accessing the wisdom of God, make it very hands-on tangible. And one of the most logical things is, I, I mentioned in this book, I talk about 15 different mindsets that you can use to see, am I, am I operating in love? And the one of them is, quite, uh, the first one is called the thinker mindset. We designed, uh, this, th we designed to think. We designed to be deeply intellectual. And what's very interesting is that the, you, you read the scriptures yesterday, and I'm sure you'll read them again, about the fact that our, you know, our carnal nature, God's thoughts are above our thoughts, and our carnal nature doesn't, our physical is not going to last. I explained on the first, on Monday, I explained about how our spiritual nature is 99% mm, of that's our, so good. and 1% is the physical. So what we see from the thinker mindset, which is an essential mindset that when you wake up in the morning, we need to make sure we're activating that, is that our brain actually physically and body, brain and body physically need a rest because the mind is so powerful, the spirit is so powerful. So if you don't rest your mind, if, I mean, sorry, if you don't rest your brain by resting your mind, your brain will break down. And that can in, in itself lead to very chaotic cognitive dissonance inside the brain. So they, to what that means is just simply switching off to the external and switching onto the internal and allowing yourself to connect with the Spirit of God and allowing your mind to literally daydream, to wonder. And as you're doing that, it's very, um, it's a brilliant exercise for increasing your intellect, your imagination, your creativity, because you're accessing the wisdom of God. You also get tremendous insight into those intrusive thoughts that 94% of the global population battle with intrusive thoughts. So it's not something just limited to someone with a label of OCD, which we shouldn't be giving because OCD is not a scientific entity at all. It's just a description of thoughts that are popping up that are intrusive. What and is that? And in, OCD stands for um, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Oh, yeah, yeah, and we're yeah. in the world today where we're trying to, where the mind approach 50 years ago shifted. Instead of looking at the person in context with their story and this going through the human condition, the sufferings of life, the traumas, the general reactions to life, instead of considering that and the socioeconomic and the, you know, all the, these factors, that's all been removed and people's with people's uniqueness and spiritual side is ignored. The person's dehumanized. This is the shift that happened 50 years ago. So the person's story hasn't been considered important. So that takes away this, this fundamental thing that we as humans need to do, and that's think deeply. Really get in touch with our spirit man. And what the research shows is that if you don't spend at least one 15 minute time during the course of the day where you just close your eyes, put down everything and just let your mind wander and just imagine and create, you actually damage the physical brain. Ideally, we should do that more often. And what that's revealing to us is it starts helping us to access the spirit, our spiritual nature. It also helps to see what's blocking our spiritual nature. So an intrusive thought like, constant, you know, that's when you get insight into these thoughts that are maybe you, the envy or the jealousy or the anger or these things that pop up that you've given too much energy to. Because it says in James 1, 13 through 15, that as you know the scripture, it's not God that tempts us. It's we that choose to give birth to the sin and the sin will grow, grow and then bring forth death. That's 13 through 15, that concept. Now we see that scientifically as well. If we don't think about our thinking and if we don't take time to build towards every six times a minute we are connecting with the Spirit of God, we do this by having a thinking mindset where we build in segments during the day where we train ourselves to switch off to the external and tune into the spiritual. If we don't do that, we actually damage the brain. Let me plug scripture in there. Yeah. 
in Joshua 1, 8. Mm -hmm. Now, um, sitting up, lying down, <laughs> the whole they're, lot. They're, they've, they've spent their 40 years and it's now time to go across that Jordan. Mm -hmm. And Joshua hadn't been there in 40 years. Now, last time he was there, there was some really big people over there it's in really these walled people. cities and all of that. So that's still in his mind. Yeah. That's, that's the memory that he has exactly. of that place. So now he's, he's about to go over there and God begins to speak to him about his mind. Mm. Mm. And he said, so this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. In other words, my word shall not, don't you be saying anything other than what you got from me. Exactly. Don't be saying, don't be talking about what you were, what you saw over there and what you've been through for the last 40 years. Don't be, don't, don't be talking about that. Yeah. Thou shalt meditate, the Hebrew word is mutter, or to talk to yourself. Therein, day and night, <laughs> that's what it's just what you got through exactly. describing, that you may observe or that you may see into how to do according to all that's written therein. Exactly. Then, it will make think, it. learn, succeed. Then, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Exactly. That's just exactly, exactly what, yes. what, what you, the, the, working, the, the title of your book. Exactly. And he said, have I not commanded you be strong and be of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. The Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever you go. But if you don't meditate on that, it won't be long the giants get back on your mind. Well, exactly. You're going to then allow whatever you give energy to will grow. Whatever you think about the most grows physically in your brain. So every time that you think, you feel. Every time you think and feel, you choose. Every time you do that spiritual stuff, you create structural change in Pray, your brain. God, you build, that. you build thoughts. So you're either building trees of healing, Revelation 22, 1 through 5, or you're building leaves of destruction, trees of destruction with every single thought. Mm -hmm. And they can always be changed. You know, we can change everything. Hope is over here. Hope is over there. This is the substance and evidence, Hebrews 11, 1. The faith is the substance and yeah. evidence of things hoped for. The so you're meditating in this. Yes. And the more you look at it, and the more you look at it, and the more you look at it, you don't let it depart from your eyes. You begin to see yourself. You do, you see yourself differently. So on a day-to-day -day basis, we have to think, you wake up in the morning and you're dealing with life. You've got kids, family, work, whatever. You have to be in that zone. You have to live in that love zone, in the perfect you zone. And that's a choice that you're making every 10 seconds. And then you're accessing, then you're doing that. Because if you're in the love zone, you're gonna access the wisdom of God. So then as you speak into that, uh, respond to that email, respond to your children, respond to your spouse, respond to your boss, whatever it may be, in the, you are actually operating from that zone. So you become like a radio. And a radio takes a non-physical light wave and through complex electronic equipment converts it. And then it's, you hear the sound. We are that radio in the middle. And we need to access this wisdom, this energy from the love energy and let it transform us by the renewing of our mind and all that stuff. And so that we speak that word in season, that we don't sound like a clanging gong. So there's all the scriptures. Scientifically, it's exactly that you will speak what you have been thinking about, what you give energy to. Mm -hmm. So if I remove oh, yeah. energy from the toxicity, if I focus on God's thoughts, the love zone, I remove energy from this. When this has no energy, this dies. You speak into that mountain, you cast it into the sea. I mean, there's just endless scripture and science that blend together, point, proving the point that we as powerful human beings are able to create our next reality. Well, and that Proverbs next reality is- 18. Yes. It's, it's just, it's so simple. You have to have help to misunderstand. Exactly, but people do misunderstand. It, it. says <laughs> the power of death and life are in the tongue. Exactly, which comes from the mind. But the tongue, the tongue work. is tied to this. Exactly, which is tied to What's your mind. What's in here comes out, out here. Of the mouth, yeah. And we've got to control it before it comes you, out. Yeah. 
or when it comes out, we've got to self-regulate. And that's the other thing, we have to live self-regulated lives. If we got to bring every thought into captivity, we have that means that we are regulating. What am I saying? What is my reaction? Am I observing my own body movements now? Am I looking at you? Am I really listening? Am I looking at the impact that I'm having in my next conversation? Or am I just blabbing on chaotic thoughts, pouring out these things, being this clanging gong? Or am I really taking... It doesn't mean you slow down. It just means that you connect with power correctly. Mm -hmm. And the correct power, not accessing the distorted power. Now you're back to choice. It's choice. Yeah. You you're choosing choose. life or death. You have to choose. It's a moment by moment choice and that requires discipline and that requires work. And we live today in a very fast paced life where William Davis's poem that what is this life if full of care we have no time to stand and stare, to stand beneath the boughs and share as long, stare as long as sheep and cows. I mean, I'm quoting a poem, but we are so connected that we disconnected. We're so busy gathering data that we don't think through the data. We are so connected in this technological age that we are the loneliest that we have ever been ever in history. The youth in the United States of America are considered the loneliest youth globally. More people die annually from loneliness and the lack of love than any other disease known to mankind. So disconnection Say that from again, more people are dying from the lack of love. Lack of love. Lone and which goes hand in hand with loneliness than any other disease known to mankind. We, our energy is growing as we connect with each other, the energy of life. So when we're alone, we get into toxic patterns and that kills our body, literally. Mm -hmm. So through our mind, we are wiping out our physical nature. That's why we have to interact, inter integrate, we have to entangle our lives with other people, which is a law of quantum physics. Every single law in quantum physics is a law that is spiritual, entanglement means the law of relationship. We are designed as humanity for relationship, primarily with God, first and foremost, with the source. Prayer, heaven is at hand, so God is all around us. We're immersed in God's wisdom. And then secondly, we manifest this love with each other through our relation, relationships. Love is always connected. What, isn't, what, what needs to be broken is incorrect love, so distorted love. So when people are alone, when people are in, have gone through abuse and trauma, that kind of thing, if you don't forgive, which is a mindset, the forgive after the thinker mindset, which we were talking about when we started the show, we're taking time to really think things through, you need to have a forgiveness mindset. Mm -hmm. Because in the morning when you wake <clears throat> up, the first thing you need to think, I talk about these mindsets like dressing yourself, literally, dress yourself, your first piece of clothes, like, like we put on the word and et cetera, et cetera. This aligns with that. I have to wake up immediately and say, I'm gonna think today. I'm gonna control my thoughts. I'm going to, every 10 seconds, I'm gonna make sure that I take time to rest my brain so I don't get so tired that I can't access the wisdom of God. I'm going to know that during the course of today, there is bound to be someone who says or does or emails something that is going to, um, going to offend me or whatever, or going to upset me or something like that. So I, I start my day with a forgiveness mindset where I know I'm going to disin not get caught up in something. If something comes up from the past that I've gone through some sort of trauma or something like that, I, I determine to have a forgiveness mindset because that means that I disentangle from that, that, that toxic environment that otherwise I've got energy still supplying it. So if you think of the world of eternity, the, the spiritual world. It's something we don't fully understand, but quantum physics starts giving us a glimpse. And we see that there is no space-time dimension. And now we understand that God talks about God created time, so God's beyond space and time. God is alwaysness, God is eternal. So what we have in our spirit man is this eternal nature which we know. So we see scientifically now, we can start seeing through the science of quantum physics, this, a hint of this eternal nature. And one thing we see from the science of quantum physics is that when two particles are put into relationship, you can separate those particles by whatever distance you want. They're still entangled. So if one turns this way, the other will turn that way. If we translate that back to humanity, to life, to day to day living, that means that you and I, we friends, we connected, we talk, there's a love connection. Before I met you, the, personally, there was still a love connection because love is always connected. But the bond grows bigger as you connect with people. Now let's say that there's people in our lives that have hurt us. That is a toxic relationship. Love relationships can never be broken. 
they can only be grown, but a toxic relationship can be broken, and that's what forgiveness does. So in the quantum world, there's like this invisible connection. There's no space or time. There's a connection that we don't understand. It's called non-locality, and also non-time, which is God's nature. So now. It, now. God's so, now. Exactly. So if now. you, if He's someone, it's always now. It's always now. Yeah. So we have that in our nature. So if someone's hurt you or traumatized you, or whatever, that means it's always now until I forgive. As soon as I forgive, I disconnect the toxic entanglement because it's abnormal and I'm now no longer connected. If I stay connected, I keep giving energy to this and it grows and grows and grows. So even if I don't think I'm thinking about it, it's still there. It's still there. That person may be 10,000 miles away and they think about you, but in an ugly way, you still got a direct line of connection. I'm still plugged in. So forgiveness is an unplugging. So that's a mindset we need to put on. I need another mindset. We have to control our thinking. How many could have, would have, should have, if only, um, are we wasting our time during 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 the day? What are, are we just reacting, shooting from the hip? Do I determine in the morning to wake up and decide I'm going to think today? The scripture I'm going just to jumped forgive, into my etc. thinking. There is therefore no now 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 now. You can't say now while it go now. <laughs> exactly, it's always nowness. It's now. There is therefore now. No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Exactly, because the past, present, and future all blend into one. And that is actually been shown by quantum physics. They are showing this incredible nature where the, where of nowness, which is this. So, time, as we understand it in the physical realm, like so now, tomorrow, if you're, next week. You're, you're lying in the bed at <laughs> night thinking about all the things you wish you hadn't done, but you did. So you got to face reality. I did that. But thank God for the blood. You can rewire thank it. Thank God for, for repentance and exactly. cleansing from all unrighteousness. Exactly. And the devil just bombarding you. You just stop him right where he is. No, no, Satan. That was then. This is now. Exactly. You've reconceptualized it. now. Exactly. You've reconceptualized that. Redesign, reconceptualize. So it's part of your story. But as Paul says, once I was like that, now I'm like this. So you remember how you were, but you're no longer bound by that. Mm -hmm. Do you know that there's more books on guilt and shame in the Christian environment than in any other environment? Why? Why are we people writing so many books about guilt and shame when that's not something that in itself is toxic? It keeps us stuck in the pain. It's, it's like saying, God, I don't really believe that Jesus rose, faced the Gethsemane, went, got into Gethsemane, faced the pain and rose again. We have to... Let's take that about th what you just said about sorrow and shame. It's extremely important. We're out of time. But let's, let's start okay. there for tomorrow. Okay, right? sounds good. That is vital information. Praise yes. God. Hasn't this been good? Yes. Oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> praise God. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.